Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm with the British Columbia Lung Association, and I have the pleasure of sitting here with Dr. Arden Pope, who is the Mary Lou Fulton Professor of Economics at Brigham Young University. Welcome to Vancouver. Thank you. Good to be here. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, so what role does scientific evidence play in the creation of effective air quality management policies and interventions? Well, science plays an enormous role. Mm -hmm. I mean, it basically, it's the science and the rigorous studies that we do trying to understand what are the sources of air pollution, how they contribute to our exposures to air pollution, and what those exposures do to our health mm -hmm. that matters so much. If we didn't understand these issues in an accurate, reasonable way, we wouldn't be able to make informed decisions with regards to how to clean up mm -hmm. and how that will help people. Absolutely. Now, one of the terms that's out there is air quality management. How would you explain that to someone like me? What exactly is air quality management? Well, air quality management is just a term that relates to our efforts to try to have clean air. There are always trade-offs between various economic goods, but we need to understand that air quality or good clean air is in fact an economic good that brings benefits to mm. us. And with anything else that brings benefits to us, we want to uh, provide it, we want to manage it, mm. we want to understand it, and we want to use it in ways that uh, improve our lives. So that's a really interesting concept and a take on it. But how does public health fit into that whole scheme? Well, clean air contributes a lot of things to our lives. Mm -hmm. Some of it is just the aesthetics associated with clean air. But it turns out that clean air also helps us avoid the various health problems that come from breathing dirty air. Mm -hmm. So when we breathe polluted air, there is a range of respiratory and cardiovascular health effects that really do impact our lives. And so, um, Clearly, air quality management is our effort to provide clean air such that we do have better health. Absolutely. Now, in the States and right here in Canada, we've seen significant improvement in our air quality over the past several years. Uh, why is air quality something we should still pay attention to? Why is it something we should care about if it's getting better? Well, it's fantastic that the air quality mm -hmm. is getting better. There's no mm -hmm. question that it's... Uh, it's made a nice contribution in the U.S. and in Canada to improved health as well. So it turns out that uh, uh, over the last few decades, we've learned that air pollution contributes to ill health, but we've also learned right. that improvements in our air quality contribute to better health. And what's remarkable is, is that even in areas that have cleaned up quite a bit, they're now only moderately polluted, as we reduce the pollution, we continue to see improvements in health. Mm -hmm. um, there is some debate over how low can we go, yes. you know, but, but so far it looks like even in areas that are already relatively clean, continued improvements still have substantial benefits, especially to human health. That's good. And so that sort of leads me to my silver bullet question of if the health benefits of a certain policy we haven't been able to really demonstrate that. Like We're still going lower, but are we going low enough? Was it worth implementing those policies in the first place? Yeah, so, so almost all of the good economic analysis as well as the epidemiologic analysis suggests that we have reaped very, very substantial benefits from, from reducing our air pollution. There have been some cost, but they haven't been as high as we would have expected. In fact, if you look at um, if you look at what's happened in the United States, we can see that our economic activities increased by about 250 percent. Wow! While at the same time, since about 1970, we've seen a reduction in sort of aggregate pollution by about 70 percent. So at the same time, we're substantially reducing our pollution emissions and cleaning up the air that we breathe. We're seeing substantial growth in economic activity. Mm -hmm. And this is happening when uh, vehicle miles tra uh, traveled have been, have been growing quite rapidly. Our GDP has been growing quite rapidly. Yet at the same time, we've had success in trying to reduce our air pollution. Um, 
there's a number of other lines of evidence that suggest that we can, in fact, improve our air quality, improve our water mm -hmm. quality, improve our environmental quality in general, while we also have robust economic activity. Absolutely. Let's, let's get a little bit more into the economics of it all. So how are the benefits of air quality regulations actually quantified? So it's, it's actually not super easy to quantify mm -hmm. all of the benefits of, of, air, uh, of improved air quality. But some of the benefits, the health benefits, can almost, let me say that again, it's difficult to fully quantify the benefits of improved air quality. But some of the benefits, especially the health benefits, are relatively easy to quantify. So for okay. example, based on the health studies, we can look at the improvements in air quality and their impact on reduced mortality, reduced hospitalizations, reduced sick days, uh, right. and that, that sort of thing. Right. And then we can monetize uh, those health impacts and basically add them up to to come up with estimates of the benefits. Right. Now I will admit that sometimes when we do that it's it's almost unbelievable mm -hmm. how large the benefits are. And we've, we do need to be very careful not to overstate the benefits right. and understate the costs, but right now most reasonable F estimates suggest that the benefits substantially outweigh the costs. That's fantastic. But w what about things like um, economic growth or, or job creation or job elimination? Do some air quality regulations affect any of those things? Um, yeah, air quality, uh, uh, air quality regulations affect jobs. Um, and in some case, ba basically what happens is, is anytime you try to provide an economic good, mm -hmm. it will affect jobs. So in, in some cases, it actually will create jobs. So, so some of the efforts to have cleaner air actually result in people working to try to provide that air, just like trying to provide a car or yeah. provide a television set. Efforts to provide cleaner air mm -hmm. um, involve human labor and, and in many cases involve sub substantial uh, job opportunities. Now, it's also true that there are costs and some of the costs mm -hmm. will be um, reduced jobs in, in areas that actually cause more pollution. Mm -hmm. So what we'll see is in situations like, like this, you'll see it, mm, some of the more polluting activities will have to be reduced while the less polluting activities and activities that actually contribute to cleaner air will increase. And um, that's consistent with any efforts to, to, to provide a, an economic good. Mm -hmm. So let's unpack that a little bit more. What do we know about the cost-benefit ratio of all of this? So, so one grand cost-benefit ratio doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, what there are is different, different policies, different approaches, different uh, um, activities that we can do that will impact our air quality. Some of them have very, very low costs and in fact have large benefits. Mm -hmm. As we continue to increase our efforts to improve our air quality, on the margin, the cost of abatement tend to go up. Okay. And so there, there probably is a point where we would say, all right, it's just too costly to take that particular project on. Mm -hmm. But what we found over the last 20 or 30 years in the United States and Canada is that the reasonable, responsible efforts that we've made to clean up our air have been cost effective. The benefits have exceeded the costs. And that's good. That gives us a lot of hope as Americans and Canadians, a lot of hope for cleaner air for the future of the economics of it all. That's right. So that's all the time that we have right now. And I want to take this time to thank Dr. Arden Pope for joining us from Brigham Young. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.